welcome back to the gas chapter. Today we're going to zoom in a little bit more on the microscopic behavior of gas. So in the previous video, you already see ma, the gas bounce here, bounce there. But let us look at the container once again. Okay, Miss Lee, please get the pump and pump in some gas particles into this beautiful box. So if you grab the top of the bar and then you squash it down, you go pss, then you go pss. Okay, so you see the gas particles are going in, right? Okay, like three puff enough should be enough. Many particles, they'll bang here, bang there. So if you look carefully at the particles, oh, when they hit the wall, ah, they bounce back, right? Do they get slower? Not exactly. Okay, so observe now. Now that all the gas particles are spread out, they're pretty stable. So the first thing I want you to pay attention is observe the movement of all these blue color particles. Assume there's many, many, lah, okay? This one is too little already. Gas actually got many, many particles. So observe the particles. What are some words you can use to describe the movement of these particles? Move very fast? What is it? Think about it. What is the movement like? Okay. The second observation I want you to put glasses on your eyes and look very carefully is you look at the speed of all the particles moving, right? Are all of them moving at the same speed? Ah? You look very carefully. Maybe you follow one, you look at the other one. Can you see any particles that are just chilling there and barely moving? Hmm. That is the second question to think about. If you notice, on the top left, there is a little number there called average speed. How do they find this average speed? Hmm. Think about that. We will look into that more in the next part. The next observation, the third one, is... How would you describe the speed of the gas particles? Wow, this is not any tell you got average speed. Huh? How you describe the speed? If you look on the left side, there's another graph that shows the number of particles against speed. So you see, oh, there's a peak there, right? That means oh, a lot of the particles have that speed. The rest, a little slower. So it's like a distribution curve. Okay, there's a whole range of value of speed, but that's the average. Okay. Number four, let's play with the container a bit. Okay, Miss Lee, turn up the heat. So in a bucket down there, we're going to throw some heat in there. So bring on the flame. Notice the thermometer up there. The Kelvin is increasing and so it's getting hotter. Watch what happens with the particles. How are they moving? How is the motion changing? Pressure increasing, temperature increasing. See, they're moving faster and faster. Oh. They're hitting the walls at faster speeds. Everything is increasing. And oh my... What is going to happen once you hit the limit? When the pressure reach very, very high, already, oh, you see the particles who are going crazy already. Look at the speed graph. Oh my goodness, you just exploded the container. Boom, boom, boom. So you notice oh, when you add heat, they go crazy. They're just like ah, hitting the wall. Okay, so that is what happens to the particle. Observe that, keep that in your mind. What do you see as a change in the speed when we throw in the flame? The last and final observation is, just now, oh, when you increase the temperature, oh, did the particles collide more with the wall or collide less with the wall when we increase the temperature? Okay, la, we wait for you to try again. Okay, the gas particle faster spread out. We are waiting for you to spread out. Okay, so this is a round two observation. They collide with the wall. Do they lose kinetic energy? Not exactly. So when you change the temperature, do they collide more? or collide less with the wall. Pause the video and think about all these observations. So with all those observations in your head, now let's bring all these ideas together to figure out how you can put it in an English sentence because you will be required to explain this in paper form. So all those stuff that you saw, particles fly here, fly there, can be named by Brownian motion. So that's what this means here. So, Miss Lee, why got microscope here in Brownian motion? What because, are we looking at? I thought we were looking at gas. Because you cannot see gases with your naked eye, my friends. Unless you have a superpower, unless you're Ant-Man, you can keep shrinking yourself. <laughs> you know, like you cannot see. But what we can see under a microscope is either smoke particles or dust or pollen or in water, we can say tiny pollen grains. Or I guess if let's say you're not in water, I think, right, uh, let's say you, you go and dust something, let's say you whack a dusty cushion underneath the sunlight, you can see the, the, the dust particle moving around. 
Do you remember that? Have you done it before? Smoke. So smoke particles or dust under bright light. How do they move? Like analogies, la. Mm. It's, yeah, it's analogy. Yeah, but but it's not just analogy because smoke and dust particle. The reason why they move haphazardly is because they collide with the gas particle in our surrounding, and the pollen grains move haphazardly because they collide with the water molecules inside the water. So it's the medium that they are traveling in, and they collide with the medium. Okay, so how do we this? What what kind of words should we use uh, to describe the movements? That you see in the I simulation. Think, hmm. One word which maybe some of you have thought of is that it's very random. Ma. Suddenly, suddenly you fly here, I fly here, it's like no particular order. You don't all move in the same direction. Everyone is just everywhere. It's very random. And I think one word you can also use is haphazard. It means what is haphazard? Ah? What does it mean? Hmm. Haphazard means all over the place. So when I when people mark your work and your teacher, let's say your teacher English very good, uh, you say your working is haphazard. So your working is all over the place, no? Suddenly you see four A part one here, then four B part one here, then four C part one there. So everything is random all over the place. So that is haphazard. Just like the movement of the particle is all over the place. Okay. So due to collision between so even though water is completely still, due to collision between the tiny pollen grains and the water molecule. So because the pollen grains or the smoke particle is moving haphazardly, you can infer that the medium that they're traveling in is moving haphazardly. So they're also moving in zigzag and jerky motion. Okay? So this Brownian motion can observe with soot, smoke dust, anything, not anything, lah, things that can move. So the conclusion here is molecules of both gas and liquid are in rapid random, rapid random motion, which is the Brownian motion. And this is a very important understanding of your, of particles and how they move. You might think that oh, you have memorized so many times already, I learned this in primary school or in year 7 IG or in form 1 science, but this actually tells, is where we start understanding the how is gas? What is this small, small, little, tiny particles? It's where scientists start to infer that, oh, there are this thing called molecule, there's this thing called atom. How else will you know? Okay, so because of this, we can then travel and think about how gas behave by the four assumptions. Okay, so Miss Ellie, when we look at the gas molecule, are, is there one, two? Oh. Or maybe we no, have no, no, many. No. In the gas, uh, even in the simulation, there are many, 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 you know. Hmm. So 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles are in one mole of gas. So that's a lot, lah, okay? A lot, a lot, a lot. And all of these are moving in rapid, random motion. Everyone fly everywhere. Right? So uh, the second thing you can fill in here is that there are no forces of attraction or repulsion between intermolecular... Well, between molecular, between molecules, <laughs> in there, when you have all these particles just flying around. No hydrogen bond, no van der Waals, nothing. Mm. No, no, don't have, no, 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 don't have. No. Because they're just flying already. They don't interact okay. with each other. Uh, mm. Another assumption, an assumption is what ah? The volume of the molecules is negligible compared to the volume of the container. So your container is very, very big. The molecule of the gas itself is very, very small, so we assume like, ah, yeah, ding, your volume ding, is small, ding. Lah, whatever, lah. So it's, so it's a bit, we yeah, we are, it's this assumption. Is it a fair assumption? Depends. That one need to ask chemistry. I mean, because all assumption has certain boundaries, one. Okay? Just like Newton's law will work unless certain assumptions happen, which we do not look into yet. Maybe later life you decide to do more physics inertial frame of references. Okay, besides that, all molecules are identical and hard, meaning during the collision, it wouldn't suddenly change shape. Uh. Like the more you collide, the flatter the molecule become like roti chanai, then cannot at <laughs> all. So it will collide with each other and the walls of the container. Will it lose kinetic energy? What do you think, uh, Miss Ellie? Well, I think we kind of assume that they are elastic. Uh, so there's not, no loss in KE. Also kind of like AS, when you think of elastic collision, Mm -hmm. There's no loss when you collide with each other or with the wall. 
Mm. And it's important to have no loss in KE because can you imagine if let's say the more the gas particle collide, it loses KE, eventually it will just all fall on the floor. Then you cannot breathe there, yeah, so yeah, then you cannot breathe there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and then there's another assumption that although it's not within the four assumption, it's also important. The collision time, the time of collision is negligible when you compare to the time between collision. And we will use this later for some derivation. Lah. All right, so that's the four kinetic theory of gases. They can, they normally will ask you to state or use this to explain. We will look at some past years later.